Want to catch more beautiful carp like this? This little bait trick might just help you do that. Okay, so welcome back to the channel everyone and welcome to the beautiful Meadowlands fishery. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about something that I think we can borrow from carp angling that probably translate quite nicely into match fishing. Now, come this time of year, it's April now, early part of April, water's warming up, Fish are getting active, they're getting hungry, and what they love to do at this time of year is absolutely feast on pellets. Now, bomb and pellet is a fantastic method from sort of mid-March, right the way through to October, maybe even early November, bomb and pellet is a fantastic match winning tactic. Even if you're pleasure fishing, it's a great way to fish because you're gonna just take a bag full of pellets, fire them in, you're gonna catch big fish, small fish, bit of everything, it's just a lovely way to fish. Now, one of the main issues with bomb and pellet fishing is actually, once you start fishing and you, several hours into the session you know you might have been feeding it for two hours three hours and what you end up with is a, an, an amount of bait on the bottom so you can imagine if you fired a pint of pellets in obviously we'll give or take what's been eaten what hasn't been eaten you're still going to have a nice spread of bait now that's advantageous because you've got fish rooting around picking up pellets make, and it actually makes them quite easy to catch however sometimes you can end up with a situation where you're getting loads of liners but you're not actually catching now a lot of the time that is as simple because you've got so much bait on the bottom they're actually finding it hard to pick out your hook bait. Now effective ways around this is to use a really standout hook bait. Robin red pellets spring to mind immediately, they're fantastic. A double eight mil robin red pellet is really visual, it stands out against the silt on the bottom. It's a very, very effective hook bait. Double pellet, double eight mil pellet, stuff like that is really effective. But as always, I'm always thinking about different options when it comes to hook baits and things like that and how I can improve my setup. And as soon as I saw these little beauties, the new micro wafters, I thought, ah, there's a little situation here that we could, we could take advantage of. Now, if you've watched any carp fishing content, you will no doubt have seen that ang the carp anglers love to use like a food bait, something like a really good quality boily, lots of particles, stuff that the fish want to eat. And then what they actually do with a hook bait, they maybe take a, a, a normal boilie, something like an 18 mil boilie, trim the top off and then they put a bit of bright stuff on the top. By that I mean artificial uh, corn, maybe a, a fluoro pop-up, something like that, something that makes the hook bait stand out over the loose offerings, like a, a visual attraction. So you've got the, the attraction of the boilie, as in the food bait, but you've also got that visual element that just helps those big carp come down and pick it out amongst all the free offerings. You've got to imagine they've got loads of boilies spread out across the with silty lake bed or loads of particles and they're relying on that little bright thing to pick to, for the carp to pick it out. So it got me thinking and I thought well surely there's something we can do there with hard pellet fishing that's similar. The fish clearly want to eat the pellets but the problem is that they have a hard time maybe finding your hook bait especially later in the session when they've rooted up the bottom. And that's where I think these little beauties can come in. Okay so what have I got in mind? Well this little setup here. Hope you can see that. Basically, I've got a lassoed pellet. So in this case, it's six mil. You've got to use six mil pellets on this lake. And then I've got a band of a bright micro bandum on, underneath it. So I've got the food element, as in the, the pellet, what the fish are eating, what the fish want to eat. But I've got that fluoro, almost a sight marker on top. And I just think that that, later in the session, when you've maybe caught a few fish, the bottom's a bit of a mess because they've stirred it up or you know, they just can't see your bait essentially. This little option here might just trick you a few extra fish. Now the way I've mounted this hook bait is with a lasso and a band. So I'll get back now and I'll show you exactly how I've tied this rig. Things you'll need to tie this rig. Revolution hooks pull. Latex bands. Size 16 hook, preferably KKHB. Some line, in this case 016 AccuPower. Nice pair of sharp scissors. Something to size your lasso. I use this little lasso tool that I bought ages and ages ago. Now pull off roughly 15 to 18 inches of line. Pass the line through the small latex band. And then fold the line in half to create a big loop with the band sitting in it. Give yourself plenty of line to work with of course. Now make a, a secondary loop. This is a grinner knot or a type of grinner knot as you can see they've got a loop with a band in it then a loop 
Then I'm going to pass the loose tag of line through. Pass the loose tag of line through the secondary loop four times. And then start to pull tight. As you can see there, I've half pulled the knot tight. And now what you need to do is insert whatever you're going to use to size your lasso. This little gadget's handy because it's got like a 6mm, 4mm, 8mm and 10mm size in. So I put that around the 6mm because I'm going to use 6mm pellets. Pull it down. Not too tight but plenty tight enough so the knot doesn't come undone. As you see the band's there trapped up against the loop sizing tool. Use your teeth to pull the tag end as well and then pull it down against the thing. You don't want it too tight because you still need to be able to open the lasso when you're fishing. So pull that down nice and snug. And then we go, got a perfect 6mm lasso. Take a pair of sharp scissors, trim off the tag, remove the lasso from the tool. And there you go, you've got the lasso ready for your pellet and then the band ready for the band dump. Pull off about 18 inches of line, give it a trim so you've got a nice clean edge to be working with. Select your hook. Now go from the back, pass the line from the back to front of the hook. Pull it through. Now when it comes to length of hair, I like a relatively long one for fishing bomb, but as you can see there, the knot is just on the bend of the hook and that seems to work out about right by the time you've tightened the lasso onto the pellet. Whip down the shank. This is a knotless knot for those who don't know. Whip down until you're roughly level with the point of the hook. Not sure how many turns that is, but probably a dozen or 15 turns, something like that. Now pass the tag of line back from back to front again. And you see, pass that through the eye and then pull all of that line through the eye of the hook. What's up? There you go. Nice and secure the best knot in the whole wide world. So there you go, we've got the knot that's not tied, we've got the six mil lasso, and then the band within the lasso. Next up, at the other end of the hook length, just tie a figure of eight loop knot. This is what I'm gonna to use to connect the hook length to my bead on my bomb setup. You see there the figure of eight. Trim. Perfect hook length. I like about 15 inches, especially on silty lake beds. Now take your revolution spool. I like to hook my hook into the edge, fold it down flat, and then wrap the hook length around the spool. You can put unlimited amount of hook lengths on this, just daisy chain them together, but always stick the hook point into that foam just to protect it and stop tangles when you're unraveling different rigs. Nice. Right, let's see how we mount the bait. So I've got the details of the hook length on there, just for future reference. Unravel your hook length. Take out the spool. Hook stays sharp because of that foam. Now you're gonna need a banding tool. This helps opening the lasso and getting the bait on the band. So open your lasso slightly. Insert the six mil pellet. The fishery pellet, so they're like the Coppins variety. I like to pick a nice long one if I can help it. Now put that in the lasso and pull it down tight like that. Nice. Now secondly, put the banding tool in the band, open the band and then get your micro band them. Pop it in there and there you go. Now sometimes it'll sit around a bit, little bit so pull it down to the bottom so it's all in line. As you can see there, the perfectly mounted 6mm pellet and that bright tipper in this case a yellow micro bandum. What a lovely little setup. Right, that's enough of the theory. Let's see if we can catch one. Now all I've got is some fishery six mils. Um, obviously, it's what you've got to use. So, but they're nice copper pellets, so they're perfect for sort of bomb pellet fishing. Per absolutely perfect. Nice and hard, and the fish love them. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go for an orange to start with. I've got that size 16 KKH on, which is a lovely sharp hook. 
sorry, I've just got a wasp in my mouth. And let's see what happens. So I'm using a bander just to get my wafter in place. And then basically, so what I've got there is that six mil pellet and then that bright orange tipper underneath it. Quite a long hair. It's probably a 10 mil gap between the bend of the hook and the, the bait. I quite like that me when I'm fishing on the bottom, like bomb fishing. So obviously we're bomb and pellet fishing. Now, if you're pleasure fishing, you just want to come and do this. As you're setting up, feed some bait. So keep the pellets going in. Bomb and pellet tends to get better and better as the session goes on. So I'm being quite generous here. I'm feeding 10 pellets twice, and then I'm casting my, over the second pouch, I'll cast my bait, my hook bait. Nice, right on top of them. And then get the rod tip down, sink your line. And then it's just a case of waiting for your bite. So, I use a butt gripper and I have my rod set up in front of me. It just allows me to sort of delay myself. If I, if I get, you often get a lot of liners and stuff fishing like this. So I just want to chill out. Having the rod set up like that just gives me that moment just to delay myself picking the rod up basically. And then what I'll do, I've got my, so I fed sort of the liner there. I fed 20 pellets and what I'll do, I'll give it a minute or so before feeding again. Obviously you've got to, read what's happening in your swim to how much bait you're feeding. On some days, two or three pellets all the time can be really good. On other days, big pouches of pellets every five minutes can be better. So it's all about sussing it out on the day. Today, there's a big wind, it's low pressure. I just think the fish are gonna be feeding today. So I'm gonna be quite aggressive with the food. In fact, let's see what happens when we feed. Because often you'll get liners when the pellets hit the water. That. Now, if you try and be as accurate as you can, I've not sort of, oh, oh, so I've not like blasted my pellets out as far as I can. The reason I haven't done that is because, like I say, it's windy today. If I did that, they're going to spread all over the place. Now, I want a bit of spread. I want the pellets to be, you know, sort of a nice area for me to catch my fish on. But I don't want, I just don't want them absolutely everywhere, if that makes sense. I want to still try and be re relatively accurate. It's a great way to fish. I love it. I love bomb and pellet fishing. And like I say, in a match, generally what I like to do is sort of fish something else to start with. You know, I'll, I'll maybe, if it's a mugging day, I'll mug some, try to mug some fish or start on a short pellet, short pole with pellets, something like that. And look to go on this after like an hour, an hour and a half feeding. If you can build it up a bit, it could be really effective. Like I say, if you're pleasure fishing and you want to do a bit of bomb and pellet fishing, when, as soon as you get there, as soon as you get to your session, as you're setting your box up, your chair up, whatever, start feeding a few pellets, grab a bag of pellets from the fishery or out the tackle shop, whatever you've got to use. And as soon as you get here, start feeding, because fish love the noise of them hard pellets going in. Now there's one thing that I do as a matter of course is change my pellet. Now, one of them things, you could just leave the pellet on and on and on and it'd be wet and soggy and you'll catch fish. But I just, in my head, I'm, every pellet I'm firing out is a hard one. And I'm pretty sure they get eaten quite quick. So I don't really want my pellet being a soggy, nasty one. You know, I want it to be nice and hard as the loose feed is. So pretty much every time I reel in, I'll put a fresh pellet on. And there we go, I've still got that bright orange tipper on. So, as before, we're just sort of building it up at the minute. So as before, let's put, how many in? 10 in. Perfect. Now, one little thing that I always do when I'm fishing with hard pellets, is give them a coating of oil. Now you could use the uh, sinking pellet oil, but I actually prefer a fish oil. Um, reason being is that, again, it's a bit borrowed from the carp fishing side of things. Um, I just think the fish absolutely love it. And it's just something that I've got so much confidence in that I have to use it. Now, 
don't use it in the winter because it doesn't work for you. It works against you, the oil's not active, but as soon as the water's, you know, we're in April now, the water's warm enough, everything's sort of active now. You know, everything's active. We're trying to catch some, you know, the fish are starting to feed now, then fish oil's a massive edge. Now, don't go mad with it, just a nice sort of glaze. The pellets have got a, a sort of a glaze of it on them, and that is all you need. I just think it, it, it's just a dead cert. Works so well. Okay, so. Oh, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> We've got a nice bend on. As you can see, that. I was just about to pick that up then, and it went. Amazing how that happens. But that, again, that wasn't in for that long. As you see, that rod's lovely and soft. Like I say, another month or two, probably too soft, but while the fish are still a bit cute and I can fish with lighter hook length with this rod, I've got no problem playing big cart with it, you know. Sometimes that's, that soft rod actually helps you. Kiting over there. That one. Going well. I've got to be careful because there's some stagings here that are a bit angry looking. Banging his head, I can feel him banging his head. Probably a good fish. Get out of there, you. Whoa. Just here, look. Look at the bend in that rod. <laughs> just awesome rods for this sort of fishing. And especially like this time of year, you know, I'll be fishing Lindome a bit late, you know, coming up and, you know, when you're catching a few F1s mixed in. Oh, missed him. Uh, when you catch, you know, you're catching a few F1s and stuff mixed in, odd skimmer. There he is. Lovely. Nice mirror taken on that. Hard pellet waft the combo. Look at that, lovely. Right, we'll show you that process once more. He was never coming off in a million years. That fish. Right, we'll show you the process once more. Funny bite that. Must have literally just picked it up as I was just about to reel in. But we can't complain, it's a fish. So as, as before, the wafter's fine, the wafter can stay. You know, that's um, a hook bait that doesn't really degrade over time, whereas my hard pellet does. So I use the um, little banding tool for opening my lasso. I just find it works really well. There we go. So as you can see, obviously, the fish are mooching around over a, a nice big area, picking up pellets. And then mine's there with that nice little bit of orange on it. Just gives it that bit of extra attraction. Might maybe that a different colour might work, but I've got that fleur orange on today. Water's so coloured, just feel like that's a nice option. So we'll just try and catch one more. Lovely. Lovely cast that. There's another fish taking line. Look at that. Four. Now you do need a good clutch when you're cart fishing. <laughs> and I must say, these centrises, these, this reel here is, well, the original centrist video that I did four years ago, it's the same, same ones that I got then. Still using them. I just love them. And even now, you can see, look how smooth that drag is. 
can't can't say fairer than that. Just really good reels. <laughs> Look at him go. Brilliant. This one does not want to come in. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it was taken 20 yards. He is not happy. He is not happy at all. Oh, look at the bend in that. Go on, the SL. Right, here he comes, another fish. Taking on the... Uh... Should have scooped him. Here he comes. Yeah, yes. Come on, there you go. Oh, I'm gonna make that my last fish of the day. Lovely one caught on that pellet and bright orange wafter combo. Something borrowed from the carp anglers, something definitely worth giving a try for your bomb and pellet fishing. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much. <laughs>